In this C-sharp programming lesson, you will learn about the IF statement. The IF statement is a branching construct. It will allow you to execute a block of code conditionally, that is, depending on the outcome of a test. Because it's possible to select blocks of code to execute, the IF statement is known as a selection construct. To show you how it works, I've already created a Windows Forms app, and now I'm going to pop a text box and a button on the form to collect some input. The idea of this application is that the user will type in the name of a country, and then will give a country-specific greeting. I'm starting by collecting the data off the form and putting it into a variable. And there is a simple if statement. I'm testing the contents of the variable country, and if it's England, I'll display a couple of message boxes. I'm executing two lines of code if the condition is met, the condition being that the country is England, but I could execute many more lines of code depending on the outcome of that test. Let's try it out first and then I'll explain some of the syntax to you. How do you do? Lovely weather today. I'm perpetuating the myth that us English people are obsessed with the weather. If I type something other than England, the code inside the if block isn't executing at all. If I type England with a lowercase e, that doesn't work either because the test which I'm performing is case sensitive. I'll talk about how we can get around that later on. There's a couple of things I'd like to point out then about the if statement. First of all, notice that the condition is enclosed within brackets. Also notice that I'm using two equal signs here. When I'm comparing one thing with another, I need to use two equal signs, which contrasts with when I'm assigning something to a variable, like here, I'm only using one equal sign. Notice the curly brackets as well. There's a curly bracket here, and there's a curly bracket here, and they enclose the block of code which I'm going to execute. Now, I've laid this out in the way that Visual Studio has presented to me, and I think this is quite readable, but I could do exactly the same thing like this. I mentioned this in an earlier lesson. In fact, I could write the entire program on one line if I wanted to. It's the curly brackets and the semicolons which say where one thing ends and another thing begins. I think that is much more readable. If I need to, I can add more lines of code here. So now I'm perpetuating the myth that all Brits are Cockneys. Call blimey, Gavna. Now I'm going to add an else if to my if block. Else if country equals Australia. Now I need another pair of curly brackets. G'day mate. And I'm perpetuating the myth that most male Australians are called Bruce. Bonza Bruce. So let's see what happens now. England is still working. I'm making sure that my new code hasn't broken the old code. We call this regression testing. And my Australian greetings are working as well now. I can have as many else if blocks as I like. Forgive me if you're Japanese. I don't know a lot of Japanese. I think Moshi Moshi is specifically a telephone greeting.
and of course I can speed things up now with a bit of copying and pasting. I believe Namaste literally means I bow to the divine in you, but it is a standard greeting across most of India. I can add one final else clause. This is a catch-all block for any country which I haven't specifically mentioned. And now I need to test this thoroughly. England is fine. Australia is still working. There are my Japanese greetings. America and India. And finally, I haven't specifically mentioned Iceland, so they're getting the generic greeting. I recommend that you pause the video and try this yourself. You can include any countries you like, but get comfortable with the syntax of the if block. Now let's take a look at an if block, which will execute code depending on the values of numeric data. I've got a text box called txt temperature and a button called btn report, which, depending on the numeric value, will tell me how warm it is in words. First, let's capture the input. Notice that I'm using one equal sign to assign a value to the temperature variable. Notice also that I'm converting whatever the user types in into an integer. This is important if I'm going to use the input as a number. Remember, a text box on a form always captures a string. So if I type in 25, I'm actually typing in the string 25. There is another way that I can cast the value in the text box as an integer. I could use the int.parse function, like this. Now let's start testing the value of that variable. If temperature less than or equal to zero, I'm reporting that it's freezing. Notice the less than or equal to symbol here. I actually typed a less than symbol followed by an equal symbol and Visual Studio has converted that for me into a less than or equal to symbol. So a temperature of zero or less than zero will give me those two messages. Otherwise, any other value for the temperature will give me those two messages. That message is outside of the if block altogether, so the message by for now will be executed one way or the other. It will be executed unconditionally. And that seems to be working exactly how I want it to. Now let's add a few else ifs. Remember else has to be the last section of an if block. I'm getting a syntax error here, and that's simply because I forgot to put in the curly brackets. That's better. So now I'm saying if the temperature is greater than zero and the temperature is less than or equal to 10, I'm going to display these two messages instead. 
Notice how I'm saying and. I'm using two ampersand symbols. We call this a logical operator. There are three possible logical operations that I might want to do. And, or, and not. I'll talk about or and not later. Notice also I'm saying if temperature greater than zero and temperature less than or equal to 10. A common mistake is this. If temperature greater than zero and less than or equal to 10. But that doesn't make sense as far as the C-sharp compiler is concerned. You have to be more explicit. So now I need to test it thoroughly. I notice the indentation is slightly different here. It doesn't actually matter, but for the sake of tidiness and just to make the if block more readable, I like to keep these in line. Let's try it out. That's less than zero, minus eight. I'm trying the boundary as well, zero itself. I should really try either side of the boundary, so a temperature of one degree is cold, nine is cold, ten is on the boundary, ten is cold as well, eleven is warm. And so is twenty. And everything above twenty is being handled by the else clause, so it's hot. And that's working exactly as I expected. Now there is a problem. I typed text instead of a number and the cast is failing. Input string was not in the correct format. So yes, I can crash the program, but in the next video, I'll show you how we can use an if statement to validate the user's input. We call this defensive programming. We can use an if statement to test whether the user has actually typed something into the text box, and we can also use it to test whether or not what the user has typed is actually a number. For now, I'm just going to reset this project. Here's an exercise that you might like to try for yourself. This will check exam marks and turn them into grades. I'll type in a mark out of 100, let's say 45. 45 is a fail. You need to book a resit. A grade of 50, on the other hand, is a grade C. You passed. 60 is also a grade C. But 61 is a grade B. In fact, everything up to 70 marks out of 100 is a grade B. 71, on the other hand, is a grade A. Pause the video now if you want to give it a go, and I'll show you one possible solution in a moment. So here's the code for my exam grade checker. In fact, it's almost identical to the code for my temperature checker. I collect the input from the form, and I have an if block with multiple else if statements. So if the mark is less than 50, we display these messages. Anything greater than or equal to 50 and less than or equal to 60 will result in a grade C. Greater than 60, and less than or equal to 70 is a B, and everything else is a grade A. Now, at the moment, there's nothing to stop the user typing in any mark they like. They could type in a mark of 1000, and it will still report a grade A. 
As I said before, in the next video I'll show you how to do some defensive programming. We can restrict the values which the user inputs into the program. There's so much more you can do now that you know about the if statement.